안녕하세요 여러분, m s 입니다 Hi everyone, Margarita here, and today I'm finally back with a weekly Korean episode. So let's just get learning. The grammar I want to talk about today is actually something that all of us can kind of sort of figure out how to do if we're pressed against the wall with a gun to our head and somebody screaming, tell me how you turn verbs into nouns in Korean, go! The first thing that's probably going to pop to your mind in that case is, well, we have hada verbs where you can literally just take away hada and there you go, you have a noun, like 공부하다, to learn. 공부 is the act of studying. You're done. No more gun to your head. You can also, if you studied a little bit more Korean, can probably remember the 기 particle that you add to any verb and that's it. You have your noun. In this case, 공부하다 turns into 공부하기, the act of studying. But what if I told you that there is actually another way to turn verbs into nouns? And fun fact, you actually can't use it with hada verbs. And the way you use this grammar is just by adding a Korean letter miyum to the stem of the verbs. If those verbs don't have a patim or the final consonant in the verb stem, then your job's super easy, you just add a miyum, you're done. Like the simplest verb in Korean, ida, to be, turns into im. Take away the da, add miyum, done. But if you do have a verb with a patim in its stem, still super easy, you just use our handy dandy vowel u, and you form a separate syllable with miyum. So it turns a verb mita to believe, for example, into midim. We take the mit, which is stem of the verb mita, and we add um, midim. This can technically be done with any Korean verb or adjective, but I also realized that until I learned this grammar concept, I took a lot of nouns for granted and I didn't know how they were formed, where in reality, they're just verbs turned into nouns using this grammatical principle, like and I have a list all right here. 웃음, 믿음, 얼음, 슬픔, 기쁨, 아픔, 꿈, 춤, 잠, 도움, 죽음, 느낌. And this is just a list of nouns I know from the top of my head. There were some nouns that I actually didn't know could exist, like 침, 절음, 울음, 졸음, 싸움, Actually, no, Saum I knew. And it was from that Korean drama, uh, Fight My Way, maybe? Did it have Saum or Saum? I don't remember. Anyways, still sounds kind of familiar. I guess the point that I'm trying to make right now is look around the kind of Korean you encounter every day and try to figure out how it happens to be the way it is instead of just blandly memorizing. I'm a firm believer in understanding the grammar behind things so that even though I know a bunch of nouns that have been formed using this grammatical principle, I can then look at a bunch of verbs that I may not know, but by knowing how I can form a noun using meum, there you go. I can then form a noun I've never even heard of before, but now I learned one and I made one myself. So here's a little bit of margarita wisdom sprinkled in this episode. We're moving on. From the list of all of these words, you guys have probably noticed that I think one of them is spelled a little bit differently. And that is not a typo, even though I make a lot of those in my videos. But tom is actually spelled with a u instead of u. Because the original verb is an irregular verb. It's a biup irregular because the stem ends on a biup. So tom or shium, shipta, something is easy. Oripta, something is difficult. Oryom, a difficulty. An interesting thing happens to the irregulars where the miyum actually gets added into the stem, like with salda to live or alda to know, which I think is super fascinating. So if there's anything I want you guys to remember from all of these nouns I just mentioned is that some of them cannot be used without their noun counterpart. It's just gonna sound awkward. So your verbs for to dream, to dance, to carry luggage always have to go with their noun counterpart. Like so. 어젯밤 꿈을 꿨어요. Which means last night I had a dream. I dreamt a dream. It's a bit of a mouthful in English, but in Korean it makes perfect sense. 오빠, 글러브 갈래? 춤추고 싶어. And that means uh, oh god, how do I translate oppa? You guys probably know what oppa means, so oppa, let's go to a club. I want to dance. Tum to da, to dance a dance. Then the next one, honjaman maome chimu, chijimaseo. And this is a very poetic sentence, but it basically means do not carry 
the weight in your heart or of your heart or of your feelings all by yourself. So technically, chimuchida just means to carry luggage, but in this case, they're using it poetically in a way where, you know, you have all this like heavy stuff on your heart, in your heart, on your heart, I don't know. So don't carry that all by yourself. Let me help you with it. I think it's a sentence from this book or manga, I'm not entirely sure, called Pulgun uh, Changmye Gunju. So the Lord of Red Flaming Roses, something like that. So speaking of poems and books, this is another way that this particle can be used to not only change verbs, but verb groups into noun clauses. And that doesn't normally happen in daily life, like we can do that using other particles, but this definitely can show up in formal situation, documents. Let's say I have a sentence, 오늘은 목요일이에요. But I want to say that I thought 오늘은 목요일이에요, which means today is Monday. So in order for me to say this in daily life, I'm probably going to say something like 오늘이 목요일이라고 생각했어요. 오늘이 목요일이라고 생각했어요. I thought 생각했다. 오늘이 today 목요일이라고 라고 is what connects the verb clause to the actual verb of me thinking, and then we'll give it Monday. So this is how I would say it in daily life, but if I ever saw this in a book or a poem or, okay, I wouldn't really see this kind of sentence in a poem, I really hope so, but it would go like, 오늘이 목요일임 생각했어요. It kind of flows, I feel like. I'm not entirely sure. It doesn't sound too natural to me, but, you know, I haven't read a lot of official documents in Korean, so maybe this would fly in them. So another way of using meum, and it's not really another way, we're still using it in the same way as we've just learned, you can also use it when you're not sure what level of formality you should use, but don't still try to use it in daily speech. Like, if you're having a conversation with somebody, probably don't talk using this particle. But let's say you text a message to somebody, and when they receive it, you get a notification that they read it. In Korean, it would be written 읽음. 읽다, to read, 읽음. When something has happened kind of as a fact, this is how I think about it at least. Another instance when I feel like I see this being used a lot is actually in TV shows. And in my favorite TV show, Running Man, I actually managed to find a sentence where it appeared on the screen. So this sentence reads, 이름표를 듣으면 시민 혹은 마피아의 표식이 숨어 있음. And this means if the name tag gets ripped off, the mark of a civilian or a mafia is hidden. Underneath it is implied. So let's break down the sentence. 이름표 is name tag. 를, object marking particle. 듣으면 comes from 듣다, which means to rip. And 면 is if. 시민 is a civilian. 혹은 means or. 마피아, mafia of course. 에 is a possessive marking particle. 표식 is a mark or a some kind of indicator. And then we have 숨어 있다, which means to be hiding. And then we have our 음, 숨어 있음. So in this case, because it's kind of like a fact and a statement, and it's also in the setting where nobody's really talking to anybody, it's not used in speech, it's just an announcement kind of thing. That's why we're using this particle. Hopefully that made sense. So now that you guys are complete and utter pros in using this super awesome grammatical principle to turn verbs into nouns, leave a comment to this video with a sentence in Korean that you've come up with that has this grammatical principle. I'll definitely read it and I'll give you some feedback. Thanks a lot for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you all very, very soon in a new weekly Korean video or my update of how I'm going about studying for topic. So check that out as well. Bye. Annyeong.